Listen to it, Fizz. Alka-Seltzer, first, fast, and always. Yes, for first aid to fast relief from acid indigestion, headache, and misery of colds, always rely on Alka-Seltzer. And now, transcribed, Alka-Seltzer presents the Quiz Kids with the chief quizzer himself, Joe Kelly. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's time to enjoy another Alka-Seltzer question session with America's famous quiz kids. Well, we have a very interesting theme for our program this afternoon, and here is our quartet to tell you about it. We'll discuss ancient history and old Bible days of long, long ago, long, long ago. If you answer correctly, you will ask amaze for questions you'll know of long, long ago. That's right. The quiz kids will be asked to review biblical and ancient times. And here to tell us what they know about the long, long ago are Patrick. I am Patrick Owen Conlon. I'm 13 years old and a 1A at Calumet High School in Chicago. Marlene. I'm Marlene Richmond. I'm 15 years old and a senior at Roosevelt High School. Joel. I'm Joel Coverman. I'm 14 years old and I'm in 3A at Roosevelt High School. Penny. I'm Penny Bergstrom. I'm 12 years old. I'm in the 8th grade at Riley School. And little Harvey. I'm Harvey Deitch. I'm 7 years old and I go to Hibbert School and I'm in grade 3B. All right, kids. Now your first question is a riddle from Mrs. Helen Carter of St. Louis, Missouri. Why didn't Noah play canasta on the ark? Pat. Well, because he sat on the deck. Ha, <laughs> ha, That's all right, Patty boy. Yes, sir, that's fine and dandy. We're off to a, a real good start. Now, uh, children, we're really going back to ancient times for this question from Marjorie Davidson of St. Louis, Missouri. You kids are to suppose you are the attendants at a zoo and are conducting a group of sightseers from cage to cage. But this zoo is filled entirely with birds and animals that are now extinct. And you can describe any extinct creature you wish as we go along in our imaginary tour. Now, who wants to try this? Harvey? Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this here is the moa bird. It's the a what bird? Moa bird. Oh, fine. Go ahead. Yeah. And they just found this bird in New Zealand. And th they hurried home to tell oh, the white man about it. But by the time the white man got there, it was very rare. <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine, Harvey. <laughs> All right, Pat has his hand up. All well, right, ladies Patty. and gentlemen, this is an Archaeopteryx. It was extinct a long time ago and is the modern forerunner of a bird. It's a reptile and it has uh, on its wings uh, uh, lots of teeth and claws. Well, that's very, very good, Patty. Joel? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Tyrannosaurus. It is an upright-looking reptile, very fierce, a carnivorous, who, uh, which ate its uh, herbivorous uh, companions in the ancient uh, uh, wilds and was, became extinct with the other dinosaurs. Oh, that's fine, Joe. Fine. Harvey? Well, this here is an eerie up. Uh, um, as you can see, it looks like a giant frog with a very long, ta with a little t long tail. Its mouth is... is is very big as you see, and it could only be, and it would be only bigger if it, if they had to move back its two front feet back. It's a very lazy animal because all it has to do is just open its mouth, dive underwater, and get up a, a lot of fish. Well, that's wonderful. Now, isn't that wonderful? I was especially impressed with the fact that it had a little long tail, like you said there. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> well, as you know, friends, the Quiz Kids program is unrehearsed, and the questions asked are sent in by you listeners. When a question is answered correctly, the Alka-Seltzer Award is a fine zenith transoceanic portable radio that gives worldwide reception no matter where you are. It's really a dandy set, and one you'll be proud to own. Now then, when the Quiz Kids miss a question... 
the Alka-Seltzer Award is a Zenith television set or a large console Zenith radio phonograph combination. The television set is the Zenith Buchanan, and it has everything. A new Super Range chassis to ensure the ultimate in performance, the sensational built-in picture magnet aerial, single knob automatic tuning, and the glare band black tube for clearer pictures. The large console radio phonograph plays all types of records and has AM and FM radio. Now, if you would like to try for one of these fine zeniths, send in a question for our radio program. Address your questions to Quiz Kids, Box Y, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now, kids, this uh, Bible question, this next one here from uh, Mrs. Dolores Stevens of New York City, makes us feel that in some ways, living uh, described in the Old Testament uh, was not so very different from our own. You are to tell who in the Bible might have been arrested if he were living today, judging by these instances. Here's the first one. If modern traffic rules were enforced in ancient times, who in the Old Testament might have paid a lot of fines for driving fast, for driving fast, for driving fast in his chariot? A careless driver he for he did not care a lot. Joel? Well, I believe that would be Jehu, and it was said of him he drove uh, furiously. That's right. That's correct, Joel, my boy. <laughs> now then, uh, tell us, uh, who might have been arrested in this instance? No trespassing, no trespassing is what today we read. No trespassing, no trespassing, they should have taken heed. Not one of them, but two of them, the both of them disobeyed. Now not just those two, but for generations we have paid. Well, now, let's see, <laughs> little Harvey has his hand up. Harvey? Well, wouldn't, wouldn't it be Adam and Eve Adam who and trespassed Eve. into the Garden of Arden? And <laughs> Eden, and, 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 and got the apple yeah. off of the that's, tree that's, the tree? That's right. That's good enough for me, Harvey. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> now, Mrs. Mary Street of Kansas City, Missouri, wants you to pretend you boys and girls were living in Rome in 70 A.D. Suppose your friends came over to your house, and while you were playing a game of marbles in the atrium, your shooter went into the impluvium. In what part of the house would you be playing, and how might the position of your shooter make your next shot a bit difficult? Joel? Uh, well, the atrium, I believe, was the main room of the uh, a place, and frequently it would be the courtyard. That's and right, I, yes. I'm not sure, but I think the impluvium is uh, sort of like a swimming pool or a fountain. Well, that's... And uh, therefore, it would be a rather difficult uh, shot from the bottom of a swimming pool. That's right. It would be underwater. Huh? Very good, Joe. Very good. <laughs> now, before we take up this next question, here's a reminder for you folks who are suffering with a cold. Alka-Seltzer. First, fast, and always. Yes, Alka-Seltzer is first aid for relief from the misery of a cold. Alka-Seltzer is fast-acting, always dependable. When you have a cold, just dissolve two Alka-Seltzer tablets in a glass of water. The familiar bubbling fizz shows you that Alka-Seltzer's beneficial ingredients are going into solution to help give you fast relief. Drink refreshing, pleasant-tasting Alka-Seltzer for the relief you want from that feverish, ache-all-over feeling that is making you miserable. And if your cold is making your throat raw and raspy, do this. Drop two Alka-Seltzer tablets in a quarter glass of warm water and gargle for soothing, comfortable relief. Alka-Seltzer will be first with you because it gives fast relief from the miseries of a cold. Always rely on Alka-Seltzer. Ask your druggist for Alka-Seltzer. First, fast, and always. You know, we have many great stars in modern sports, of course, but Gertrude Schultz of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, says there are certain characters from way back in mythology who would have compared favorably with our present-day champions. Now, what legendary person might have been known as the Johnny Weissmuller of his day? Joe? Well, there was, uh, I believe, uh, this man, Hero, who swam the Hellespont uh, almost every night uh, to uh, visit his girlfriend. Well, now, uh, wait a minute. Uh, what name did you give me there? Hero. Did you say Hero? Yeah. I think that was the young lady's name. Uh, 
Leander. Leander, that's it. That's right. <laughs> and who might have been known as the gorgeous George of mythology? Pat? Well, uh, the girl, that might be Hercules. Hercules? Very, very good, Patty. This next question from Mrs. Alice Thurston of New York City is a tough Bible race, kids. She wants to find out just how nimble and alert children are in using their knowledge of the Bible and finding specific chapters and verses. Now, we'll give all of you uh, kids uh, Bibles, and I'll name a book of the Bible, chapter and verse, and as soon as you find it, raise your hand, and when I call on you, start reading the verse. Also, to answer this question correctly, you must find each reference in 10 seconds. All right, now you have your Bibles, and here's the first one. On your marks, Psalms 1, 6. 1, 2, 3. Penny? All right, Penny. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Oh, that's wonderful, Penny. Wonderful. <laughs> In only three seconds. All right, quickly now. Ten seconds. First Corinthians 2, 3. One, two. Penny? And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Very, very good. Oh, you like that. Now then, kids, here's a real hard one. Isaiah 42, 12. One. Uh, Penny? My. <laughs> Let him give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. Penny, that's amazing, isn't it, folks? Really is. <laughs> All right, now, uh, <clears throat> let's see uh, what our next one is here. Uh, Dorothy Harrison of uh, Bellingham, Washington, asks how Jacob's pillow of the Bible has recently been featured in the news. Joe? Well, when the uh, Stone of Scone was uh, stolen in England, and it was supposed to be the Royal uh, Stone of Scotland, uh, it was claimed that the stone originally went back to um, uh, biblical times and uh, was Jacob's pillar, this uh, stone he rested upon when he had one of his visions. That's right, Joel. That's right. Uh -huh. Oh, say, by the way, right here, I have a report to make. You know, folks, the letters for this year's best teacher contest are just pouring in. Yes, sir, it looks as though this year's contest is going to be bigger and better than ever before. And the way the youngsters write about their favorite teachers, it's really wonderful. And I wanted you listeners to hear some of the things they say. So I've asked Dr. Paul A. Whitty, professor of education at Northwestern University and chairman of our scholarship committee, to visit our classroom this afternoon. Dr. Whitty has selected excerpts from letters we've received in previous years. And, well, I... I know it wasn't an easy matter to make that selection, was it, Dr. Whitty? No, it wasn't, Mr. Kelly. But I can't begin to tell you how heartening these letters are. Here is one written by a little second-grade child. School terrified me. Then came Mrs. Murphy. She isn't easy, but she puts us at ease. She trusts us to do our best. We do. And then another letter written by a youngster in the elementary school. She is the best teacher in the world. When I came to school, I had no friends and I couldn't read. She taught me to read. Now I have real friends in school and imaginary friends in books. I shall never be lonely again. Are the little boy in bed with rheumatic fever who wanted more than anything else to go to school. And then one day, a real teacher came to teach and help him at home. And he wrote about her. She is fresh sweet-smelling, and pretty as a summer morning. That's my teacher. And finally, at the end of his letter, he wrote this. She isn't only my teacher, but she's my best friend. And I hope I can keep on holding her helping hand tight. And then there's a 12-year-old boy in the sixth grade who says, I'm almost 12 now and in the sixth grade. It's been a long time since I was in the second grade, but I'll never forget my teacher, Mrs. S., we did so many interesting things that year. Every day held surprises. Our room was so pretty. The teacher was the nicest person in the whole world. She helped me over so many bumps. And if you don't believe me, you can ask Michael Reed, and he'll tell you so, too. We were talking about her the other day, and we said, next year we'll be going up above her. Michael Reed said, that's true, isn't it? We will be going up above her next year. Ain't it awful? 
And I said, ain't it? Mr. Kelly, these letters are real tributes to wonderful teachers everywhere, and they're an inspiration to all of us who teach. Thank you, Dr. Whitty. Those letters are an inspiration to all of us. And now, boys and girls, how about it? Have you sent in your letter for this year's Best Teacher Contest? You write on the subject, The Teacher Who Has Helped Me Most. You can see from the examples we have had that you write just uh, sincerely and honestly how you feel about your favorite teacher. You don't ask anyone to help you. You just write down the things you like about your teacher and send your letter to Quiz Kids Best Teacher Contest, Box Y, Chicago 77, Illinois. And say, you can't lose. That's right. Every boy and girl who enters our contest receives a handsome certificate suitable for framing to present to the teacher he has written about. If you write a winning letter, you will receive a $1,000 United States savings bond. There will be two winning letters selected and 552 prizes altogether. The next 50 best letters win $10 in cash each. And the writers of the next 500 best letters will each receive an attractive Quiz Kids pin and honor certificate. Well, say, boys and girls, think how wonderful it will be if your favorite teacher wins the title of Best Teacher of the Year. A prize of $2,000 in cash goes with that title, and the teacher who is selected as the most promising teacher will receive $2,000 to be used for graduate study. The decision of our judges will be final. All entries become the properties of our sponsor, Miles Laboratories. And in case of ties, duplicate prizes will be awarded. Now, there's not too much time left, boys and girls. No, sir. Our contest closes midnight, February 11th, and your letters must be postmarked before that time. Remember, you write a letter of any length on the subject, The Teacher Who Has Helped Me Most. You may write about a teacher you have now or one you have had in the past if that teacher is still teaching. Be sure to include your name, age, grade, school, and home address. So get busy on your letter right now, this very afternoon. Who knows? It may be a winner. All right. Now then, uh, here's our next question here. Mrs. Ruth Henderson of Seattle, Washington, points out that women of antiquity were often very influential uh, politically in their day. We will have the help of our quartet for this question, and you youngsters are to identify the woman in their song. Now don't underestimate the power of a woman She gets in her say from Washington to Truman Now there was a nice young lady, she was born a Greek She won a beauty contest, she looked glamorous and sleek She kept her folks at war for longer than a week So just because a girl's a beaut don't think that she is meek. <laughs> Pat? Oh, that might be Cleopatra. Cleopatra. No, no, Joe. Well, that'd be Helena Troy. Helena it? Troy, that's right. <laughs> now, what woman who influenced military leaders of her day do you find in this song? Down by that old Egyptian stream, I met the prince. Yes, girl in town With her eyes of hazel brown Wearing a genuine princess gown It was there I kept bowing To this maid of renown I really The village queen, village queen, down by that old Egyptian stream. Marlene? Cleopatra? That's Cleopatra, that's right. <laughs> now then, just to see uh, whether you kids were really alert during uh, that Bible verse race we had. I'd like to ask, in which book of the Bible you found this verse? For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. How about that? Pat? Well, I think that'll be uh, Corinthians. No, no. 
Oh, I'm checking up on you here. Uh-oh. Penny? I believe that's my Isaiah. No, dear. Marlene? Jackson? No, I think you kids are guessing now. We went through this earlier in the program. Pat? If I remember, the one left is Psalms. That's the boy, Pat. It finally came through. <laughs> Well, we have a surprise guest here in our classroom to help us out on this next question. She's the leading lady of Tennessee Williams' new play, Rose Tattoo. I'm going to introduce her in just a minute, but right now, it's Alka-Seltzer. First, fast, and uh, always. Yes, remember Alka-Seltzer when you come home feeling like this. Oh, boy, what a day. The boss sure put me through the loops today. Do this, do that, where's this, what happened to that? I'm really done in. Tired out. The first thing to do is drink a glass of sparkling Alka-Seltzer, mister, and see how fast you feel better. Alka-Seltzer? That's right. Always depend on Alka-Seltzer. Relax and freshen up with Alka-Seltzer. Just dissolve one or two Alka-Seltzer tablets in a glass of water, then drink the sparkling, refreshing solution this makes. See how quickly and effectively Alka-Seltzer can relieve the tired, tense, aching muscles and headache how its sparkling alkalizing properties actually help speed recovery from the fatigue itself. And listen, here's something else. To help you rest better and wake up feeling better, drink another glass of Alka-Seltzer before you go to bed. Yes, Alka-Seltzer offers real relief from that tired, tense feeling that follows a hectic day of nervous tension and hard work. Try it, won't you? You bet I will. Alka-Seltzer right now, or whenever I come home after a work-weary day. And Alka-Seltzer again before I go to bed. A good idea. It is. Alka-Seltzer will be first with you for fast relief. Always rely on Alka-Seltzer. Ask your druggist for Alka-Seltzer. First, fast, and always. Now then, I want to introduce lovely Miss Maureen Stapleton, who plays the leading role in Tennessee Williams' new play, Rose Tattoo. Miss Stapleton. <laughs> Miss Stapleton, I hear that the play Rose Tattoo has left Chicago after its very successful run, and the play will be going right on to New York to make its debut there. Is that right? Yes, Joe. We open in New York next Saturday at the Martin Beck. Oh, good for you. Well, now, kids, Miss Stapleton is here to help us with this next question <clears throat> from Mrs. Emily Hart of Denver, Colorado. So the classroom is all yours, Miss Stapleton. Well, for this question, you're to identify the following women of biblical history, whom I'm going to portray. Here's the first one. Hearken, thou art pursued. Whither the men went, I wot not. Get you to the mountain and hide there three days. Behold, when you come again to this land, you shall see this scarlet thread bound to my window. Then, because I save you now, you shall protect my brethren and me and see we are harmed not when you return to this city. I couldn't see who was first. was up first. To the well, that would be Rahab. Uh -huh. and she was uh, helping Joshua. That's right. <laughs> All right, who's speaking in this instance? Listen to me. The king has evil intent toward thee. If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. No, no, speakest not, but hear me. I shall let thee down from the window and hide an image and pillow of goat's hair in the bed. And when the king's messengers come asking for thee, I will say he is not well. I think Pat was first again. That's right. Well, uh, that would be Michael, who was David's wife. That's right. <laughs> well, oh, my goodness. <laughs> thank you, Miss Stapleton. It certainly was a pleasure to have you visit us, and we wish you all the luck in the world in New York. Thank Bye. You. Now, for this question, kids, from Margaret Wilson of New Orleans, Louisiana, the quartet will sing a special arrangement of a beautiful hymn, and you are to try to give the composer of either the music or lyrics. Let's listen. Oh. Well, I 
think that would be Otto Ramus Te Christi, and uh, that uh, was written, I think, by Palestrina. That's right. That's good boy, Pat. Good boy. <laughs> All right, let's listen to the next one. All people have on earth to dwell. Sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Him serve with mirth, his praise for tell. Come ye before him. How about that lovely hymn? Who wrote the music? Or who wrote the lyrics? No? Well, I'm going to tell you because I have them on my card. The name of the hymn, of course, was Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Thomas Ken wrote the lyrics and Louis Bourgeois, the melody. Now, Clacia, of course, that was a miss, and uh, that means that uh, Margaret Wilson of New Orleans, Louisiana... We will receive from the makers of Alka-Seltzer her choice between a large console Zenith radio phonograph combination or a fine Zenith television set for stomping you kids. That's the first miss, I think, this afternoon. Clacia Curtis of Peru, Vermont, has noticed that quite a few of the products we find in our stores bear the names of mythological characters, and she wants you to tell why you think these brand names are well-suited to the various products. The first one is Medusa Cement. All right, Marlene. Well, Medusa's head was, well, it was hideous, and I, I suppose cement was more or less, uh, it's uh, thick, and <clears throat> you just can't get out of it uh, once you get in. Is that the idea? Or... Well, wait, I think Joel, he has his hand up can clear us up on that. What, what are you going to say, Joel? Uh, well, her head turned anybody who looked on her face to stone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and <laughs> now then, kids, uh, before I give you the special and exciting news about next Sunday, here's an important message. Don't take chances. Don't guess that you and your family get enough of the essential vitamins. Make sure they do by seeing that each member takes one-a-day brand multiple vitamins every day. You can't keep feeling your best nor looking your best unless you get enough vitamins. One-a-day brand multiple vitamins taken every day give complete protection against the lack of any or all of the vitamins known to be essential. Ask for and insist on getting the vitamins with the big one on the package. Well, kids, you did fine with your questions on biblical and ancient times uh, this afternoon. And as usual, you will each receive a $100 savings bond from the makers of Alka-Seltzer to help you with your future education. Now then, here's the big news about next week. The American Dental Association is celebrating the third annual National Children's Dental Health Day in Cleveland, Ohio. And the Quiz Kids have been invited to broadcast next Sunday's program from Cleveland. We're very happy about this invitation, and we're looking forward to seeing all of you folks there in person. And I know you listeners will enjoy hearing five prominent dentists Match brains and wits with Joel Copperman, Naomi Cooks, Patrick Conlon, Harvey Deitch, and one of Cleveland's own quiz kids. And you know something? I understand these dentists have been drilling and drilling. <laughs> so it looks like it's going to be a painless battle royal next Sunday. So plan to be with us, won't you? And friends, between now and then, remember that your dimes and dollars are powerful weapons in the fight against infantile paralysis. So make your contribution to the 1951 March of Dimes more generous than ever before, won't you? And now, until next Sunday from Cleveland, Ohio, this is Joe Kelly dismissing the quiz kids. Goodbye, kids. Goodbye, Bye, Mr. Mr. Kelly. Kelly. Listen to the quiz kids coast to coast every Sunday afternoon and see and hear Alka Seltzer's quiz kids television show on NBC. Consult your local newspaper for time and station. This is Franklin Ferguson speaking, transcribed. Be sure to hear Danny Kaye, Gary Cooper, and Ray Bolger on The Big Show today on NBC.